hello, this video I will explain about the SN2 mechanism. I suggest to you before you see this video, listen first about the SN1 mechanism on the previous video. SN2 mechanism is a bimolecular nucleophilic substitution mechanism. The bimolecular means that the transition state of the rate determining step involves the collision of the two types of molecules. So the bimolecular means that in the rate determining step, or as the simple say, the first step involves the two types of molecule, which is haloalkane and also the nucleophile. So the rate of reaction depends on the concentration of the haloalkane and the concentration of the nucleophile. If we write the rate law, it means that rate equal to K, concentration nucleophile and concentration haloalkane. Rate equal to K, concentration haloalkane times concentration nucleophile. Means that in the first step or in the rate determining step, we include both. We include both haloalkane and nucleophile. So we can say that SN2 is second order reaction. So the two, it come from the order of the reaction which is second order. They involve both of the molecule which is haloalkane and nucleophile in the rate determining step. Or simply say in the first step. So SN2 mechanism, we can conclude that before we see the mechanism, SN2 mechanism, they involve one step mechanism. Before this, SN1 mechanism involve two step. SN2 mechanism, they will involve only one step mechanism. Means that the halogen will leave at the same time the nucleophile will attack the alpha carbon. Alpha carbon is a carbon that attached to the halogen. Okay, I repeat again, if... In SN1 mechanism, they involve two-step mechanism, which is the halogen will leave first and then will, will attack the nucleophile to the carbocation. But in SN2, we doesn't form the carbocation. But we only do one-step mechanism, which is the halogen will leave at the same time nucleophile attack. Means that, simply say, halogen leave and nucleophile attack at the same time. If before this, as N1 mechanism, halogen leave first and nucleophile will enter after that. But this one, they will occur at the same time. Because of that, they occur one step mechanism. So the nucleophile use, because they must be attacked at the same time the halogen leave, they must use strong nucleophile such as OH-, CH3O-, and CN-. Okay. So, the reactivity on SN2 reaction depend on the size of atom or group of atom attached to the alpha carbon. Alpha carbon is carbon atom that bonded to the halogen atom. So, the carbon that attached to halogen, we call alpha carbon. If in the SN1 mechanism, the reactivity is depends on the stability of the carbocation. The more stable the carbocation form, is more stable is more higher the reactivity in SN1 mechanism. But, is N, but in SN2 mechanism, it depends on the size of atom or group of atom that attach to the alpha carbon. If they are small, they are preferred to do SN2 mechanism. Means they have high reactivity towards SN2 mechanism. Why? We will see after this. So the presence of the bulky alkyl group will prevent the nucleophilic attack. What it means by bulky alkyl group? If the alpha carbon that attached to the halogen is attached to the bulky alkyl group, like bulky alkyl group means that bigger alkyl group, like third butyl, isobutyl, neopentyl. So when they are bigger, they will have high steric effect. High steric effect. Steric effect means that we have high bulky alkyl group. So means that they will slow down the reaction rate because the nucleophile will difficult to attack the alpha carbon if the alpha carbon attached to the bulky alkyl group. I will see the, uh, we will see the picture. The steady effect is an effect on the relative rate on re of reaction caused by the size of special arrangement of atom, arrangement of group of atom that attached at or near to the reacting site. Okay, we see the when the size and number of substituents increase, nucleophile can hardly attack the alpha carbon due to the high steric effect. Means that if we see this one, this one is a methyl halide. For let's say we have Cl, so they are methyl chloride. If they are Br, methyl bromide. So means that we can see that this alpha carbon 
Alpha carbon means that carbon that attached to halogen, they only attached to three hydrogen. As we know that hydrogen is very small. So means that we have many empty space here that can be used by the nucleophile to attack the back side of the alpha carbon. So remember because as N2 mechanism, the halogen will leave at the same time the nucleophile will be attacked. The nucleophile will be attacked at the back side of the alpha carbon. They will not attack at the side that we contain halogen because the halogen is partially negative. The nucleophile also partially negative. So they will not attack at the same side that we have partially negative halogen. So means that nucleophile will attack at the back side of the alpha carbon. Back side that means the opposite side from the halogen. If the kafal carbon, alpha carbon attached to the hydrogen only or only one small alkyl group like CH3, small CH3, one CH3 and then another two is H, means that they have many empty space that can be used by the nucleophile to attack the alpha carbon. So means that the nucleophile is easily to attack. So means that we call this one because they are very small. If we only have one CH3 also and then another two is H, means that the steric effect is less. Steric effect is less. Side of the hydrogen atom less. So steric effect, steric effect is less. So means nucleophile is easy to attack the alpha carbon. But if you see this structure, if we have third butyl halogen, let's say if X is bromide, so third butyl bromide. So this alpha carbon, we can see they attach to 3 CH3. So 3 CH3 is quite bigger. So 1 CH3 is bigger. And then we, if we have 3 CH3, they will have little space that can be can that can be used by the nucleophile to attack the back side of the alpha carbon. Means that we call this one the alpha carbon attached to the highly bulky alkyl group. Means that the steric effect is high. So we can see this one, the size of substituent group is higher. Means that the substituent, the C, attached to three substituent, they have bigger size, bigger or bulky RK group. Means that we call steric effect are uh, increasing. So means that the nucleophile is hard to attack the alpha carbon. That is the reason why the primary or the methyl halide are easily to occur as N1 mechanism because they have free space from the back side of the alpha carbon to be attacked by the nucleophile. But if we have tertiary haloalkene, the back side of the alpha carbon is fully occupied or we can say they have high steric effect. So means that the nucleophile is difficult to attack the alpha carbon before, before. because of that, they are not preferred to do as N1 mechanism which is the, sorry, means that tertiary haloalkane, because they have high steric effect, the nucleophile is hardly to attack at the back side of the alpha carbon. They are not preferred to do SN2 mechanism, which is the nucleophile attack at the same time the halogen will be leave. Because of that, tertiary haloalkane is preferred to do SN1 mechanism, which is the halogen leave first. And then you form carbocation. When you form carbocation, the nucleophile will attack the carbocation. It's more easily for the tertiary haloalkene. Okay, this one explanation about whether we can use SN1 or SN2 mechanism. So if we want to use SN2, if we want to use SN2 me mechanism, you might make sure that If we want to use SN2 mechanism, you must make sure that the alpha carbon attached to the small alkyl group or small atom. Okay, because the reactivity of an SN2 reaction depends on the size of atom or group of atom that attached to alpha carbon. So see on the alpha carbon whether they attach to the small group or the bigger group. If they attach to the small alkyl group, so they are preferred to do SN2 mechanism because the nucleophile easily to attack the alpha carbon, the back side of the alpha carbon. Okay, now we see how to do the mechanism. So this one relative reactivity of the haloalkane towards SN2 mechanism. So we can see that tertiary haloalkane have the low reactivity towards SN2 mechanism because they have 
baki aki group that attach to the alpha carbon. And then the more easily to occur as N2 mechanism is metal halide and also primary haloalkane because of the presence of the small bulky aki group or less steric effect that attach to the alpha carbon. So means that the nucleophile is easily to attack the backside of the alpha carbon. Okay, let's say if we have this reaction, how to show the mechanism? First, when you have reaction, think first whether they do SN1 or SN2 mechanism. This one, we can see there are methyl bromide. So, we can clearly see the alpha carbon only attached to the three hydrogen. So, they have less theory effect. So, are easily to occur SN1, S, uh, are easily to occur SN2 mechanism, which is the nucleophile easily to attack the alpha carbon. At the same time, the halogen is leaving. So, to show this mechanism as N2 mechanism, we must use 3D shape. Means that carbon, that when they attach to four bonds, they are tetrahedral shape. So, make sure they must be, you must use a 3D. Okay, you must write like this. So, CBR bond because they are living. So, we write here. So, make sure that the BR that you want to living on the right hand side and then the, the rest of the atom is on the left hand side in tetrahedral shape. Okay, remember tetrahedral shape in 3D, you must use a wedges line, dashes line. Okay, and then the nucleophile will attack on the back side. So because of that, your, your halogen that you want to leave must be on the right hand side. So we will do the arrow attack and leaving at the same time. So the, B, the nucleophile will attack the C and this bond will break the CBR bond, which is these two electron from this bond are goes to BR. So remember, as N2 mechanism, one step mechanism, nucleophile attack at the same time, the, halo, the CBR bond is broken. So we can uh, know that you will straightly form a product, but we need to show the transition state. So this one, the transition state, before this, they are tetrahedral because they have Four bond. Now, in transition state, the COH bond is partially formed. CBR bond is partially broken. So, they will form five bond. So, you must show in trigonal bipyramidal shape. So, trigonal bipyramidal shape. So, this one partially broken, partially formed. So, you must use a dashes line. Eh, this one partially formed, this one partially broken. You must use a dashes line. So you can see that now O, from before this, they have three lone pair. Now they only have two lone pair because one lone pair already form a bond with the C. Okay, so this one transition state, you must label transition state and use a square bracket. And then, what is the product happen? If Br is completely leaving, you become Br minus and then now we already form COH bond. Okay, what you can see, that's this one. This one is the original configuration. Br on the left hand side and another 3 on the Br on the right hand side and another 3 on the right hand side in tetrahedral shape. When the nucleophile attack on the back side of the reaction and the Br is leaving, they will have inverse configuration. Means that this H, because they already accept the new nucleophile, they will inverse to the right hand side. This 3 H uh, will be on the right hand side. Okay, if I show in the molecular model, so this one is the our rectin. Let's say this one is H and then this one Br in the middle is uh, in the middle is carbon. This one is the nucleophile. When they attack, the nucleophile attack, you will form this structure. So this three bond will become in the middle. They will form trigonal bipyramidal. So this bond is partially broken, this one is partially formed when the nucleophile attack. Okay, this one trigonal bipyramidal. So from this three bond, that on the left hand side, it will become straight in the middle. Become trigonal bipyramidal. When we, the bond that partially broken is completely broken, completely broken, you will form this structure back, tetrahedral back. So means that from the uh, return to the product, they will have inverse configuration. The H before this on the left hand side, they will become on the right hand side. Okay. So this one explain about the SN2 mechanism. SN2 mechanism. I repeat again, remember the SN2 mechanism. 
they involve one step. The halogen will leave at the same time. They 